Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to answer question 2, part B, from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P3 International A-Level Excel exam. And this follows on from part A, where we were told to take this fraction and write it in this form where we split it into separate terms. And we've shown that in part A. You can see that um, from the playlist of this, uh, you know, of this particular video of this particular paper, which there will be a card appearing on the top of the screen, which takes you there if you want to see part A first. Um, and now for part B, we have to use, hence always means using what you just did. So we have to use the fact that we have answered this question earlier. Okay. And we have to use algebraic integration to show that the integral of the function g of x between the limits of 4 and 8 will give you alpha plus beta uh, lin 3 and we have to find what alpha and beta is find their values the integers that we have to find the value of all right so now so of course it says hence means we're going to use this form this is the form that we're going to use to integrate okay, this is something which is conducive for us to integrate with so we're going to take the integral between the limits of 4 and 8 of 2x minus 1 plus 6 over x minus 2 with respect to x. Okay, now this is fine for integration, this is fine for integration, and this is also fine for integration. Okay, now, but what you don't do, like some people will try to do, they'll say, okay, let's write this with the bracket on top. If you did this, the problem is, if you try to integrate, I mean, we, we, can, uh, we can see that we can, we, we could think about it that we could reverse the chain rule because inside here you differentiate you get a constant outside is also a constant but the problem is integrating in that way you have to add one to the power in which case the power becomes zero and you have to divide by the new power you get zero it doesn't work so you cannot integrate in this form okay it's just like when we try to integrate one over x we don't know how to integrate it until we learnt about the differential of the lin function okay so when we try to integrate one over x when we were doing P2 or P1, we couldn't do it. But once we learn about differentiating the lin of x, then we understood how to um, integrate 1 over x. Okay, Because we know that when you differentiate lin of x, you differentiate lin of x with respect to x, you get 1 over x. Okay, you get 1 over x. And also, when you differentiate the lin of negative x, okay, um, with respect to x, when x is, in this case, x has to be negative. In this case, x has to be positive because we know that you can't have a negative value in here. So if it's lin of negative x, where x is a negative value, therefore it becomes a positive inside this function, then this will give you, when you differentiate that, you have 1 over x, okay? So you have 1 over minus x, 1 over minus x, times the differential of what's inside the function, which is minus 1, which gives you 1 over x. So if we... If we integrate lin, uh, if we integrate one over x, we can either get lin of x or we can get the lin of negative x. So we integrate one over x, we either get lin of x, and that's when x is greater than zero, or we get the lin of negative x, and that's when x was less than zero. Okay, and those two two kind of uh, those two can be combined as saying the lin of the modulus of x. Okay, so when x is greater than zero, that's positive. When x is less than zero, that's also positive. The, 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 fun, the, the, the input of the lin will also be positive. Right? And it's because when you integrate lin of negative x, you end up with also 1 over x. Okay, but x has to be less than zero for this to be uh, allowed to be there in the first place. Right? And here x has to be greater than zero for that to be allowed because we cannot have a negative input for um, x for the lin of something. We can't have lin of something negative. So here x must be positive, and here x must be negative. So we have minus, and minus gives you positive input for lin. All right. So that's the reason why we write lin of the modulus of x. A little brief explanation of why. You don't really need to know that, but a lot of students they don't understand why do we put modulus. Okay. It's because both of these result, both of these differentials give us the same thing. Okay. So the the integral of one over x is going to be either lin of x if x is greater than zero or lin of negative x if x is less than zero. So we combine them into one statement by saying lin of the modulus of x. So if x is greater than zero, 
would be lin of x. If x is less than zero, it would be lin of a minus x. Okay, so that's how we combine them into one. That's why we write the lin um, of modulus of something when you integrate it. And then what, what that causes is no negative input can be ever put in there for the lin uh, when we're doing these integrations. Okay, and um, that's the reason for it. So I'll just get rid of that for now. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that we can reverse the chain rule when we're integrating, okay, one over x. Okay, it's reversing the chain rule. So this is the same kind of issue here. But we have to make sure when we reverse the chain rule that we have something on the numerator, which is the differential of what's that in the denominator. Because if I have the lin of some function of x, okay, and I differentiate that with respect to x, I write 1 over whatever's inside the function. But because of the chain rule, I have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So we end up with the numerator being the differential of what's in the denominator. Okay, so as long as it's some constant times the differential of the denominator, we can reverse the chain rule. So if we differentiate x minus 2, we get 1. The numerator is some constant times 1. So we can reverse the chain rule for this. We can use this, this method here to reverse the chain rule. Now, if you have an issue with re re reversing the chain rule, there will be a card that will appear at this moment in the video, which will show you exactly how to use, how to do reversing the chain rule. And I will, I will put that um, card up at this point. If you click on that card, it will take you to a video which is quite lengthy, which explains the whole concept of reversing the chain rule when you can use it, when you can't use it, and lots of different examples using even trig. Uh, functions and so on. Anyway, let's get on with the question. So that's just a little background that I wanted to make sure that we understood before we continue. So now we can actually integrate this. Now when you start integrating, right, first of all, when you write your integral, always put, if they're separate terms, put them in a bracket and then dx. Okay, and now when you start integrating, you no longer have the integral sign, you have a square brackets. So you integrate 2x, you get, you add 1 to the power, so remember, there's a 1 here that's not written, and you divide by the new power. You have a constant term, it just gains an x, so it becomes minus 1x, we're just going to just write minus x, you don't have to write minus 1. If it's a constant, it just gains an x, and if you differentiate minus x, you get minus 1. You're going to reverse, and here, as we mentioned, we're going to have plus, now we've got 6 times the lin, as I mentioned, the modulus of x minus 2, divided by the differential what's inside the function, which is 1. Okay? And then we have our limits, which right at the end of the brackets. Now this will give us, if we simplify this, that's going to be 2x squared over 2, which is x squared, minus x plus 6 times the lin of the modulus of x minus 2. Always keep the modulus there until we know that what's the input is positive. Okay, now we can substitute the values of 8 and 4 in here. So now when you put 8 in here, you're going to get 64 minus 8 plus 6 times the lin of 8 minus 2 which is 6 minus and keep a bracket here to save it from this minus sign before it otherwise you'll mess up with your signs now we put 4 into the into the um, integral so you have 4 squared which is 16 minus 4 plus 6 times lin and you have 4 minus 2 which is 2. okay now once i know that the input is positive. I don't have to put modulus of 6, modulus because it's, it's positive now. If it came out as lin of negative 6, then I'll write it as lin of 6, because you're going to have to write it as a positive value, because we're writing the modulus of that. So anyway, now we can continue and uh, simplify this. So 64 minus 8 is 56. So you have 56. That's right. Plus 6 lin 6. I'm not going to raise this to the power of 6, because I can see I have 6 lin of something, and 6 lin of something, and... Uh, I want to keep things simple. I don't want to write, raise this to a huge power. Put a big number there. I'll keep it simple. And you have minus, and this is 16 minus 4, which is 12. Okay, plus 6 lin 2. And now we can say 56 minus 12 is 44. 6 lin 6 plus, uh, minus 6 lin 6. Be careful. 6 lin 6, six, lin six minus 6 lin 2. So you have plus 6 lin 6 minus 6 lin 2. Now these two, um, um, the easiest way to deal with this is to take out 6 as a common factor. Um, then we can just deal with these 
um, using the laws of logarithm. So I have six times lin six minus lin two. This is the same as that. It's just six times lin six and minus six times lin two. Now I can use the laws of logarithms. I know that the lin of a minus the lin of b is equal to the lin of a over b, the division law. Right, as long as they're the same base, which of course they are, they're both log to the base e lin. So I can combine these together as one by dividing six and two, and that's exactly the form that we need. We want to have a lin three there. All right, so that will give us that lin three because six divided by two is three. So this will give us 44 plus six times the lin of six over three, which gives you 44 plus six. Let me make it neater plus six times lin of three. And there is our answer. Okay, so we can see that the alpha is 44 and the beta is six. So if you want to write that, you can write that. You don't have to, because you've got it in that form. And the beta is equal to six. So there is our final answer in the form required. Okay, so there is how you do this um, integration. Um, so there's a bit of, um, reversing the chain rule here, which some people find a bit kind of like um, difficult, but it's actually very easy. So as I said, the video that I um, put the card up for earlier should help you with that. So that concludes this particular question. Um, and you will find that in the playlist up here, you will find part A of this question and also the rest of the questions in this paper. And here you'll have a playlist dealing with integration of uh, P3, reversing the chain rule. Okay, I'll have a specific, specific um, playlist for that. And also integration in general, the different types of integration from P3, you'll find another playlist here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.